Your numbers grow stronger by the day. You no longer have to live in fear. The time has come for benders to experience fear. One of my questions is to start off, when when Neji passed and all that, like, how did you feel after, like, voicing him for so many years? Well, I knew it was coming because, it, um, you know, everybody knew. And so uh, I, I was prepared for it. And then um, when the time came to record it, I just had to buckle down and be ready to work because it required a lot of uh, uh, focus to, to make those scenes come together um but ultimately i wasn't that bad because i know anime well enough to know that there would always be flashbacks yeah and other things and so that i wasn't really gone but after whatever 12 or 13 years i was felt lucky that i had made it that far without dying my thing is what really got you into voice acting and for somebody like me who wants to get into voice acting what would you what would your advice be starting off well i'd already come to california to pursue acting and while i was uh in los angeles pursuing acting there are uh many different ways that actors can make money and one of those ways is voiceovers and so along with my on-camera pursuits and commercials and theatrical I started pursuing voiceover as well and found that not only was I really good at it, but I was meeting a lot of people who were interested in me mm -hmm. and uh, willing to connect me uh, with work. And so that's how I got uh, started in voiceovers. And then it just grew and grew yeah. as I got older and, uh, the advice is different today than it would have been many years ago because of uh, the digital revolution, which made it so people can record from home and, and so forth. But the bottom line is you still need to be associated with people who are in casting yeah. or agents who have access to um, jobs that you would audition for. And for that, you would need a, a demo tape. Okay. There's also a lot of good how-to books. Mm -hmm. on the subject how to get into voiceover i know that yuri lowenthal and tara platt wrote a great book called voiceover voice actor that um that uh is pretty current a lot of people have read there's other books as well they're easy to read and not very expensive so i would read every how-to book on the subject that i could find and you got to do the the work study acting practice learn how to be good at acting and voiceovers mm -hmm. And um, then do the work of building associations and meeting people. When you were like recording with other voice actors, like were there any times like where y'all would like read the script to like one another, like before going in the studio? Um, for original animation, the script gets sent to you in advance mm -hmm. for you to look at. And then uh, very often you go into the booth and, and if it's a group record, there's a rehearsal. Okay. So at that point, you would read it together. But mostly, especially today, animation occurs just one at a time. Mm. And there isn't any access to the script until you show up to work. And so in that case, you just have to use your skills, collaborate with the director to give line readings. So there is no real reading through with anybody maybe uh in anime anyway an actor will watch the sub mm -hmm. to see what it's about in, ad in advance but that's not always the case either so they just have to come in cold and read the lines i always wondered that because i was like always in the back of my mind like how would y'all go about like reading the script and going over it you um have to just have been practiced and uh rehearsed uh, to be professional so that when you walk in and they hand you the lines, even if you've never read them, you can execute the performance just because you've spent years training and you have the skills to essentially do it cold. So one other thing, when I know you used to voice a lot, like a lot of Digimon characters like back then. Yeah. Koji. And, yeah. And I got, I got a whole list of them, but 
I know you used to like voice all of that back then. Like compared to like now when you would do voice acting, how like like how much difference is it now compared to like back then for sure? Well, interestingly enough, is I would consider it very stable. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just it's not different. You know, the you go into the booth. The lines are on the page, whether that page is a iPad or a screen or a piece of paper, and you got to act out the lines in accordance with the story. And then more importantly, what the, the director and the clients want from you, because after all, it is their project. They've hired you to participate in their project. It's not yeah. doesn't belong to the actor. So you have to do what you're told. And uh, so that answer is i don't think really anything has changed it's all exactly the same as it ever ever was because you still got to go into the booth and read the lines off the page so like when it came to voicing neji for like so many years like how many years would you say you have voiced neji and also like over that amount of time did you like build like have to build up that character over time I don't know how many years it is, but since we just did a Naruto game, like within the last six months, mm -hmm. you could you could kind of say I still do voice Neji. Yeah. But the show was on mm -hmm. for what, 10 years, maybe more. Yeah. Uh, which was fantastic. And as far as building up the character, luckily in uh, dubbing, mm -hmm. that work has already been done because it's it's communicated by the story. Yeah. It's already there in the Japanese version. And then it's up to the localizer to bring it to life in English. The building on the character has kind of been done because it's right there in an example for you when, when you're recording. When they came to like a lot of your characters, were there more than like one specific character that you that you like grown attached to over the like the years of voice acting? I don't know about attached, but I sure have a soft spot for the big guys like Koji and Neji and Toshiro. Always in every interview, how much I loved the show Heat Guy J, where I played Daisuke Aurora. Mm -hmm. That's a that was a great show, and I and I loved uh, I loved working on that show. Um, so those are the I'd say the top ones that I am attached to, if I if I could call it that for sure. Okay, okay, that's. That's real interesting because like I'd be seeing like certain like certain voice actors and then like they'll have like a character that they've voiced for so many years, but like sometimes not be attached to them. But and then you like you have like one character that they voiced like so long ago and be very attached to him. So like that's interesting. Yeah, it just it just sort of depends on what your interaction with the brand is really. How was it working with like David Lodge that voiced Jirai and like how was it like working with all of them? If you could like like give like your own it's insight. It's really great. The thing about voiceovers is not none of us just are doing uh anime. That's only a part of our career. There are many yeah. ways in Los Angeles to make money as a voiceover. So David, for example, is someone who I knew from looping. Oh wow. And uh movies and TV shows, and then because we all do jobs, we we then see each other on um, on anime. So it's great working with all those people and interesting, like I said, that I work with them in other areas as well. Or we have the same agent and I see them in the waiting room when we're reading for commercial auditions or reading commercial auditions together. So yeah. we all interact because uh, working in the field of voiceovers, of which anime is just one of many types of jobs. When when you say that right there, that is that's also true because one of your characters, the Riddler, you know what I'm saying, from uh DC Super Friends, if I'm not mistaken. Like Yes. Which I don't know. You can maybe you can tell me. I've only seen a clip of that. I don't even know where I can where I could see that. Where where can I even see that? Do you know? Oh no, I just looked it up. I looked it up. I was like, I was like, I know for a fact that I've seen this show before. And I was just I just went to type in and then I found it. I don't yeah, it was just a, a one-off. It's just a one-off that I did a few years ago. Uh, yeah. uh, interestingly enough, at a, a studio right across the street from my house. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I didn't even... I walked there. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <that's... laughs> you told me, but you have been working on the game. I won't ask what, what, like, what title and all that, but I will ask, have, 
do you voice any of the characters within your game? No, uh, I do not, which is um, something that sometimes happens. As a director, I'll get a part on one of my own shows, but I am not the one in charge of hiring actors, so I just get a list. A list of, like, the people? Yeah, of who's of who's going to be on it, or in the case of a of uh, certain games, the ca- the cast is already the cast. It's the cast of you know, yeah, something that already exists, and so those people just already are the people. Like sometimes, like certain people, I have like maybe I don't know, like three major roles throughout like their whole life of voice acting, as of like certain people have like years with like one character, you know. Yeah, and you never know what's going to happen because even when you get on a show, you don't know if it's going to be one season or 13 seasons. There's no there's no way of knowing. Which is, like, it's so interesting to, like, see how y'all go through this. And also, are there any, like, conventions you'll be going to, or, like, this year or later on this year? I know of, and I can't remember the name, but it's happening in uh, Texas at the mm-hmm. end of August. Okay. And uh, I, I don't know it off the top of my head just because that's it's written down and it's far enough away yeah. that I haven't memorized it yet. But it's in uh, s- somewhere in a, on, uh, like on the Gulf, right at the in the corner of Texas. And I forget what uh, what oh, the okay. name of it is, but that's where I'm going then. Otherwise, I'm um, busy here in town, so I don't like mm-hmm. to spend too many weekends flying, flying around. Um, yeah. I, yeah, again, sorry I don't remember the name and I don't I have it written down, but it's upstairs. I don't even have it in my phone yet uh cuz I have the information. But yeah, at the end of August, there's one I'm yeah. doing in Texas and um uh you know, I try to get in just a a couple a, a year. I know a lot of my friends are at least out once twice a month, but mm-hmm. uh I just don't have that the time to travel that much. Are there any questions or books or programs you would recommend as a, like a voice actor to get into it? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff uh, behind the voice actors. I think on uh, uh, you know on uh, YouTube or wherever that is, there's a lot of great interviews mm-hmm. and behind behind the voice actors, people like you do a lot of good interviews mm-hmm. where there's you know information. And then, like I already said, those how to books, right? That's that is someone's put their time and energy into writing a whole book to tell you how to do it. So that those are the, really the main resources. The other aspect yeah. is buckling down and really doing it. And it takes time. What are like the important qualities of a professional voiceover or a professional voice actor? General. Mm-hmm. Um, a, a person needs to be, uh, an actor. I, I, I didn't come out here thinking I would do silly voices. Yeah. I came out here to be an actor. And so my training is in acting and studying acting. And I think some people don't quite realize that going into voiceover isn't some separate thing that we're out here in show business and we're all actors. We do yeah. plays and musicals and we get hired to be in movies, you know, and um, that uh, it's more of an acting jobs than a voiceover job so that that would be the answer to your question is the uh understanding that this is acting the only difference is they're not filming you and you're not on a stage where people are watching they're only utilizing the spoken part of your performance (laughs) i was gonna say because y'all be giving y'all all all in like like in a lot of in a lot of scenes that y'all do in terms of like voice acting like yeah like a scene that's what the money is for yeah, <laughs> like there'll be scenes like where y'all are serious, and then there's scenes like where y'all just like give up like a thousand percent, where y'all have to go like full on emotion, which is beautiful. Yeah, it, I mean, and, and again, that's that's what the job is. But also, you know, when it's your face and your name, you can't give yeah. any less than that because it's your reputation on the line. What in your life experience was most helpful to you in becoming a voice actor? I mean, a really direct answer to that is just when I was a kid and I had a tape recorder and me and my friends used to tape record ourselves doing funny things. Oh, that's cool. Uh, pretend talk shows or silly commercials. You know, you would do all that stuff and do impressions and thought we were really funny. And 
all we were doing was playing around. But then when I, I started doing voiceovers, I was like, this is just like when I was a kid making up all this stuff. <laughs> so in a way, directly a to answer your question, what in my life prepared me? Well, that, that. So as a voice actor, would you say you like you need to have like range in terms of like what you could do and versatility? Mostly experience, though, right? Um, range and versatility never hurt in any field, uh, yeah. and everyone has their own path. So, uh, you know, someone may have a career because of all their range and versatility, and others may have a career because they're really good at one thing. Yeah, it sort of just depends. Uh, you never really know what you're going to get when you're pursuing this field because we can only be actors in projects that people are putting forward. So we, so you don't really know uh, what it, what is going to be called of you. You just need to be prepared and see what happens. Wow. That's, that really is interesting. I, I like, I like how you worded that. What is the key to voice editing? Cause I wrote, I wrote multiple questions down. So I don't know. I mean, they're, they're uh, like studying acting would be the, like the, the, the main thing, the, the main thing. But then, the, you know, there's the other things like being good at reading words off of the page. That's real. You know, not stumbling, not, uh, knowing what words are and really being able to read them clean and clear because yeah. uh, you just you just do it again. But, you know, professionalism, making sure all your skills are tight. Good is all right with you before I end stream. Could you give us a voice line from like Toshiro, like saying Bankai? Yeah, Toshiro. The the he says um I guess he would say Bankai Dai Guren Hyoden Maru <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh man. And also yeah, that's that's his famous line. Oh most definitely, most definitely. And also, lastly, can you hit us with the Neji uh A trigram sixty four palms? Well he would say A trigram sixty four palms. <laughs> Oh, wow. I love it. We all love Byakugan. Most definitely. Most definitely. Eight trigrams, 64 palms. <laughs> and then when, like, Neji gets serious with it, it's, it's so good. Right, because then he just starts uh, kicking ass and taking names. <laughs> with the Thousand Year Blood War going on for Bleach, mm -hmm. um, and I'm I'm guessing you've been watching it, so how how are your feelings on, like, all that has happened so far? within the series. I haven't had too much time to watch it plot wise, but I have mm -hmm. been in to work on it several times and I haven't had too many uh, lines, but it sure has been fun to come back and revisit the character of Toshiro after this much time. Yeah. After years, you know, since we did bleach, but the truth is I, I haven't had very many lot lines, but I've been in a lot of these episodes. So mm -hmm. it, it has been fun to revisit it. But as far as the plot, Mm -hmm. I, I don't really have much to say because I, I'm not entirely familiar with the, the plot as it is in Blood okay. War. Thank you so much for coming on stream. Yeah, Zay, uh, thanks for reaching out. All right, well, then I appreciate you reaching out. Hope you got some answers to some of the stuff you were interested in finding out. I did. Thank you so much. Yeah, great meeting you, and hopefully I'll see you soon or we can meet in person. <laughs> most definitely, most definitely. Well, you have a good rest of your day. And you thanks too. Thanks to everyone. Thanks, A. See ya. See ya.